everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, but this is Bear Jet 755. The Labor Day holiday just passed, and it got me to thinking about that word labor and Labor Day and why we have it and what it all means. And I thought to myself, well, first of all, it shouldn't be called Labor Day because on that day we don't labor. It's supposed to be a day off. It should be called Laborers Day, a day for the laborers. And I also thought, that, wow, we work the whole year and you get a day dedicated to you. In fact, not every laborer gets the day off. If you're working at a department store, if you work for the electric company or the telephone company or any service industry, most likely you're working. The toll, toll booth operators are all working full force on that day for sure. So it's really not a day for laborers, it's just this holiday that's made up. It's like a bookend at the end of the summer that bookends Memorial Day. It's really not a laborer's day because not all laborers get off. Well, let's, let's really think about what this means for a moment. If, you, if you're laboring, is, is that really something you want to do? I, I'm going to say that again because I think it's a really important way to think of it. Work is one thing. Work, you know, that's a term for things we do that when we're accomplishing something, maybe you're working on your car, you're working at your job, you're working at your business, you're working to exercise, you're working on fixing your home, you're working with your children's homework, you're working to raise your kids. That's, that's an okay thing. Work is okay, but labor is different. Labor to me is something that is not, in my mind, it, it, it's something that I view as not fun, something that is what I don't want to be doing. I don't want anything to be laborious. And that's, that those two words are, are associated, right? Laborious and labor. So I'm going to ask you, is the work you do laborious? Is your job laborious? Are the things that you spend the majority of your waking hours doing laborious to you? Is it labor or is it something you enjoy? Is it something you want to wake up for? Is it something that is going to help you to leave a legacy for your family? Is it something that you're impacting the world with? I, I found this chart online. It's, it's, really, it's really kind of interesting. I'll put it up there for just a moment if you want to, uh, if you want to do a screenshot of that, you sure can and see what that's all about. Really, what this talks about is how we carve up our day as far as the different activities we have. And this is sleeping. This is working. As you can tell, that's two-thirds of your day is gone. Two-thirds of your life is gone with sleeping and working. And then, of course, there's household activities and eating and drinking, which we need to do, right? And caring for others and other things, 1.7 hours. And then there is leisure and sports, and it says 2.5 hours a day. Leisure and sports, that's watching TV, relaxing, maybe maybe going for a walk, maybe working out, or playing on a team somewhere. My question to you though is this, this green section down here. That's, that's the working and relaxing, that's 8.7 hours a day average. That means many people work far beyond that every day. And I, and I ask you, is, is that something, is that time spent well for you? Not just by a paycheck, but by what you're getting out of it and the impact you're having on the world, on life, on others? Is it something you look forward to? Is it what you imagined it to be? This third of your life. Is one third of your life part of what your dream is, part of what your vision is for yourself? Is this what you always thought it would be? Or is it something completely different? And that's a question, of course, only you can answer. But that I believe it's an important question to ask. So as I finish up the video today, what I, what I want you to consider doing is at the conclusion of this, write in the comment section what your passion in life is. What is your passion? What's that thing you want to be doing all the time? What's that thing that you live for? What's that thing that you believe you were born to contribute to society, born to contribute to humanity? born to contribute to your family, to your friends, to the people around you. What is that thing? What is it that is your 
passion. For some people, that's a hard thing to retrieve because it was so long ago when it was the last time you thought about it. It was such a long time ago. We were kids. If you ask kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Boom, boom, boom. They've got answers. When you ask an adult, what, what's, what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? We don't even know anymore. We've forgotten. So I'm going to ask you, what is it that you dream about? What is it that is your passion? What's your vision for yourself? Maybe you abandon it at some time, but why not put that back in front of you? Why not take this third of your life and make it meaningful for you? Take that third of your life and make it more meaningful so that the rest of the time you're spending that other third can change the world. You can change the world. What if this third became two thirds? How amazing would that be? There's a way I believe for each one of us to take our passion and intersect it with our purpose. It was in one of my earlier videos. I talked about that. And I truly believe that next year on Labor Day, instead of dreading the day after Labor Day, maybe you can be looking forward to it because there's something that's inside you that you have truly always wanted to do, to be, to become, to have. What is it inside of you? Write that down in the comments section below. That's my message for today. Remember, like bathing, motivation doesn't last. That's why we need to do both every day. This is Barrett Jahanian saying, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Have a greater day, everyone.